Hello everybody, here we will be talking about ESBL, so basically beta lactamases which hydrolyze the beta lactam rings of penicillinase type and also involving the third generation cephalosporin. So as the spectrum got extended from penicillin to third generation cephalosporin, they came to be known as ESBL and they also hydrolyze the monobactam ring of astreonam. To circumvent this problem, the answer that we had was a beta lactamase inhibitor. This is a beta lactam like structure, so you can call it a look alike. There is clovulinate, there is tazobactam, and there is salvactam. And what they do is they bind the beta lactamase. And in this process, there is suicide inhibition. So once they bind with the beta lactamase, they themselves also get inactivated and inactivate the beta lactamase as well. Now we had a situation where the bacteria were overcome the BLIs as well. So the next antibiotic which takes care of this is a carbapenem. Carbapenem also has a beta lactam ring but it is unique and it is called a carbapenem ring. But with time the beta lactamases also started hydrolyzing the carbapenem and these are so called carbapenemase. And what do we have to circumvent this? We have the newest generation beta lactamase inhibitors. They are avibactam, weborbactam and relibactam. They are not structurally like a beta lactam. They are structurally different, so they are not lookalikes, and they have reversible binding with a beta lactamase, so they can be made available again for action. So as long as the antibiotic duration exists, you can expect the BLIs to work. Also, they have extended the spectrum of the antibiotic, so they cover much more than what the first generation did. Avibactam comes with ceftazidim, weborbactam with meropenem, and relibactam with imipenem silastatin. And we are also using non beta lactam drugs to overcome the ESBL phenomena. Let us look at the classification. Here, the interesting part is that the ESBL classification also includes carbapenemases. So, classically, when we said something is ESBL, we actually meant that it hydrolyzes a beta lactam antibiotic and it can be taken care of by the addition of a BLI. But now that definition is extended to include the carbapenemases as well. So when we classify, we have the carbapenemases also in the classification. The AMBLER classification is most popular and it is basically based on the structure of the beta lactamase. We have this four classes A, B, C and D. A, C, D which are in circles are serine proteases so their active site has serine and the B is actually having a metal ion and they are also known as metallobetal lactamase MBL. Let us go into the individual class. A, one of the earlier ones to be isolated SHV, CTX and TM are the most known of them and they could be tackled by a beta lactamase inhibitor but the more dependable is a carbapenem. So the drug of choice for A and these enzymes is a carbapenem. But in the same group we have KPC which is Klebsiella producing carbapenemase and it's a carbapenem, it can hydrolyze a carbapenem. This can be overcome by the newer generation beta lactamase inhibitor and that is avibactam in combination with ceftazidim. We can also use a carbapenem with the newer BLI, weborbactam and relibactam. Now we come to the MBL, metallobeta lactamase. They have this divalent ion zinc at their active site and all of them hydrolyze the beta lactams including the carbapenems. So the drugs that we have are colistin, tigicycline, 
phosphomycin interestingly astyonam is also one of them the ones which was hydrolyzed by group a is active against the mbl we have cefiderocol and there is still a place for carbapenem but we have known that carbapenems are hydrolyzed by mbls then where is the place for them we will get to know about it and whenever we encounter them we usually have combinations the best ones are those with estionam and casevi in terms of the literature that we have there is a lot available to read about estionam and ceftazidime avibactam combination and then the next is meropenem based combination therapy which includes any one of these drugs or you can use a combination of these drugs as well but generally carbapenem is part of the therapy and we'll let you know why we come to group c and this is probably the earliest maybe amp c amp here stands for ampicillin this resistance could be a part of the bacteria so called chromosomal so they inherently have this and there is one property about amp c is one is derepression so those which are there carrying the chromosome they are, may not be active but something happens and there is derepression the chromosome starts producing the amp c and then it is also inducible and this induction is generally in the presence of some beta lactam antibiotics somehow their presence causes activation of the chromosomal amp c and there is increased elaboration of amp c the notorious one are cefoxitin and also the carbapenem imipenem their presence causes increased elaboration of the amp c enzyme what is the significant for amp c enzyme these are the bacteria which have it as part of the chromosome enterobacter cytobacter seracea pseudomonas and if you expose them to third generation or second generation cephalosporins they will elaborate more and more amp c this group can also be called as cephalosporinases but the fourth generation cephalosporin cefepime works against it it can also be plasmid mediated whereby this inducibility and derepression doesn't come into play it's inherently producing amp c all the time and the examples are those of e coli and klebsiella what choices do we have for this group cefepime and this is because of its structure why this cephalosporin is active against mc majority of the time the carbapenems retain their sensitivity so they will be effective for mc and we can also use a novel blbli combination now we come to group d another serine protease oxacillinase and the most talked about or maybe the most prevalent oxa48 this is also a carbapenemase and the drug of choice for this is ceftazidim avibactam so we see that in all the four groups except probably for mc there is a carbapenemase and so you have different substrate specificity in the same class how do we do detection of esbl in the laboratory in which class they could be we come to know that when they are resistant to the third generation cephalosporin and monobactams we call it esbl when the carbapenems are also resistant we call them carbapenemases and if you want to know from which class they are we try to manipulate with some inhibitors with some facilitators and then look at the growth or inhibition and then comment probably which class we are from this called the phenotypic detection of esbl and probably the most prevalent the most available so for example you have a beta lactam antibiotics it is showing resistance you add clovulinate and the resistance goes away this is likely to be a class a you can use phenyl boronic acid for inhibition for also kpc you can use this and by addition of this you find that there is this sensitivity then you can say that probably there is a kpc we use edta as a chelating agent for the mbls so you add 
EDTA to the culture media and you find that susceptibility comes back. We use inducers for MC like imipenem. For oxidation phenotypically, uh, the rules are not as straightforward, but phenylboronic acid is used there as well. So this could be one of the more available methods. So you will have some idea and thereby you can choose an antibiotic. So if you feel like there is an MBL, you probably would not give a carbapenem, especially as a monotherapy. Then we have genotypic detection. You can do whole genome sequencing or you can identify certain sequences which are identified to carry the beta lactamase. This is the best way to know which beta lactamase are we dealing with but are more cumbersome, less available. And then we have molecular methods that basically only tells you that the carbapenemase is present. What class or what type it is, it is not able to tell you that. Now why we talked about combination? This is because the bacteria can carry different type of beta lactamases from different class at the same time in varying combinations. A classic example is Acinetobacter. It could be an MBL, it could be uh, AMC, it could be an OXA elaborating or it could be just something which is a class A type. And we also need to consider that okay, beta lactamase is one of the major mechanisms by which the bacteria evade the antibiotic but there are also issues with efflux pumps which throws the antibiotic away, porin channels which facilitate the entry of the antibiotic into the bacteria and there could be dysfunction in them so the entry of the antibiotic into the bacteria is prohibited and there, there could be altered binding sites. These may actually work in combination so you could have a beta lactamase and you could have these other mechanisms all in one place and that is why we try to combine antibiotics with complementary effects maybe with synergistic activity or maybe with takes care of the different mechanisms at different times and one of the classic example is estrionam and the use with ceftazidine. We know that MBLs there will be no activity for the beta lactam or the beta lactam is inhibitor but Compared to estriona monotherapy, the combination therapy has given better results. And why is that? Because estriona may take care of the MBL and cas -AB may take care of other groups. And that is where the meropenem combination is used. Meropenem does inhibit a large number of beta lactamases. And so if it is combined with something it is not active against, like an MBL, then that combination therapy is likely to give better results. So whenever we identify a beta lactamase, we need to consider if we need to give a combination therapy in certain conditions when we know it is a class A type, it is not a carbapenemase, maybe a meropenem monotherapy will do or if it is a KPC, we can give a cas -AV monotherapy. But majority of the times, we will be looking at combination therapy, not only because of the different types of beta lactamases that can be present at one time but also because of the other mechanisms of resistance which are in place. If we get to understand the basics of ESBL probably the majority of gram negative resistance that we encounter in our ICU we will have better idea and we will have a better therapeutic option keeping everything that we have talked in mind.